Hello, Vera, and thank you very much for joining us on The People Show. Today, we have with us another very special guest. As it is the norm here on The People, we bring you people that you would want to relate to, people you would want to hear from and learn a thing or two about life's choices and how to overcome difficulties and also just how to go about life normally. My name is Timothy Omundi. If you are tuned in to us this time, our email address is info at gbskenya.com. Our SMS line is 21144. We start our conversation now. I'll allow my guest to introduce himself. Welcome to the show. And first and foremost, introduce yourself to our viewers. Yes. Habariako, Kenya. Good morning. Thank you for this invitation. I'm humble and honored by this. Welcome. Uh, my name is Dwight A. Yes, Kobolo. Dwight Asturwal Sagarai Kobo. Mm -hmm. uh, my stage name is Iguazu AC. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make a brief for people to understand. Mm -hmm. um, Iguazu is a river of uh, South America mm -hmm. that join, a river never separate, uh, that join three countries, mm -hmm. three languages, mm -hmm. and three races. Mm -hmm. Europe, indigenous, the original inhabitant, and Africa, mm -hmm. Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. Oh, wow. Portuguese, Guarani, and Spanish. Yeah. Why did you choose that name? Why I choose that name? As Basically, a stage name, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, I took the language of the biggest two sites, which is uh, the old Portuguese kingdom and the old Spanish kingdom in America. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Portuguese, the other is a Spanish language, and I took both. I am 100% perfect conversant in mm -hmm. both of them. Right. And uh, then I grew up singing samba and tango and all the music of the two sites. Uh. And uh, my mother is uh, white, and my father is African from the South, is Afro-America. Right. And then I found this, this is me, Iguazu. I am a result of the union. Of the union, yeah, <laughs> yes. for all these uh, cultures and yeah. nationalities. Yeah. Now, you introduced to us your name, Dwight Astruba Sagarei Kobold. I mean, that's a long name. <laughs> but also, before, I mean, before the show, you explained to me. But then I find it very interesting. It's something I would also like you maybe to explain so that our viewers can get a feel of what that name means yeah. and why you have so many names. OK. Dwight is uh, a name that I was given uh, by my grandpa. All right. My grandpa, who was a pastor, who was from America. Mm -hmm. and in. He grew up in the time of Dwight Eisenhower, right, yeah, the former yeah, president of yeah, the US. Yeah. And I was born in a date where me and my uncle were mm -hmm. he did something in history. Mm -hmm. So I was named after him. Right. Uh, the second name is Asdrubal, mm -hmm. which is a, a Spanish name. But in the past Finnish uh, uh, kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, it was called Help Us God. Ah. Sagarai is just a family name. They are the family names don't right. have mean, but it's from the Basque side of uh, Spain. That's from your mother's side? From That's from my side. father. From your father's side. Yeah, and uh, from my uh, Kobo, from my mother, mm -hmm. because it's French, the oh. French that came to America uh -huh. because of the World War, yes. and then came they to uh, spread the Baptist church oh. in South America. Interesting, because you are telling me your father and then this uh, family name and is yeah. Spanish. Mm -hmm. It, he was recognized by the mother because in the old time, it was the mother who took the child there oh. to be presented. So oh, he to got the church and yeah, stuff there. that thing. And, uh, but his father mm -hmm. was Afro as well. That is why all the, the, ah, the like, but African like Sudanese, that side, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, so it's a kind of a mixed race of yeah. some sort. Yeah. Now, Dwight, maybe you can just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your childhood. What was it growing up as, Dwight? Growing up for me, I can say that I was very privileged in the matter that I was the last born of eight. Mm -hmm. My father, who has a very African spirit, African are happy people. You have the capacity to overcome the bad moment into positive one mm -hmm. for you to continue going on. Yes. My f carnival is something very well known there. Yes. People have a wrong idea that carnival is a pagan thing. Yes. For Europe, it started as a pagan, mm -hmm. but in America, it was not pagan mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. There is a mix there between the magic king's arrival to give the gift to baby Jesus, all right. the Africans coming from the mountain to the palace of the king and queen of Portugal uh -huh. in the day of the magic kings, and from the time nobody know from when that passed from uh, magic kings to carnival. Right. So our carnival, mm -hmm. that is in route 
a, an African carnival mm -hmm. is a religious party, is a Christian party. It's a Christian party. Yeah. So because uh, also, as you mentioned, it touched on the wise men bringing gifts to Jesus yes. and stuff like that. Yes. So it was that convoy. Yeah. So my father was the president, the CEO always of the carnival committee of the oh. street. <laughs> so my house was full of people. Oh. Yeah. And uh, being the last one then that uh, my mother used to say, I mean, this uh, boy, he has like 35 women taking care of them. Yes, all the neighborhood oh. yeah, around us. The mother of my mother was as well uh, dark in color. So as she ended up marrying my father, who uh -huh. was African by uh -huh. color, by color yeah. it shows already when I came here to Kenya, and this is Link, because I know we were talking about what is the program about, yeah. and there is a big morality there, a big uh, testimony to mm -hmm. give. Mm -hmm. My mother, because of the love of her mother, mm -hmm. She, when I told her that I was coming to Africa, she told me immediately, I am, I'm going to live with you there. Oh. If my mother used to see you, she started to rub you and to tell, I would have loved to have oh, your to color. Have this skill tone. Because it was her mother yeah. as well. And if we go to the point that Africa mm -hmm. is, is the cradle of humanity, humanity mm -hmm. comes from here. Yeah, so yeah. Africa will always be Mama Africa. Mama Africa. So feel proud of how beautiful you are, people, because you are holding it. Now, you, you, you're almost carrying me away with that, but I want to take you <laughs> back to your childhood. You mentioned something about when you're growing up being part of a, of a I, I think, a village ensemble or something like that. Maybe you can share with us a little bit about how you grew up, how you developed to be the person that you are, and what molded you to be that. Okay, that is the thing. Um, my father was, uh, as I told you as well, I don't know what is it that you carry mm -hmm. that secret, that <laughs> he was popular and friend of everyone. So my house was full of people. Maybe one of the things that I can say is like, sometimes even to study, it was a real challenge because all people, they are all the friends of my brothers mm -hmm. and then all the friends of my father and organizing the things. And I was, the, I was uh, okay, among the best students of my family mm -hmm. then, it was a real challenge to keep the peace and concentration where I was studying. Yeah. My mother was, when I find, she never, as you, mm -hmm. never came to tell us the challenges that he, she went through. Mm -hmm. But being the last one, you are, grow very wise yeah, because yeah. you grow up with the elders. With everyone, yeah. And then one day I said, Mom, what is it that I can see you that you are worried, and I know that it's because of the food. Mm -hmm. And you're still receiving people and cooking and cooking and cooking. And then she told me, shut up. <laughs> one day, uh -huh. I don't know when one of my children will be needing a plate of food mm -hmm. and he will be given, look at me in Africa, living in an African roof mm -hmm. with African families, with parents giving me money when they see me in the street. And I, I swear to you, it has happened. I have been waiting in the bus and they have mm -hmm. said, what are you doing here? God bless you. Take, come home when you're coming back. And the people say, it's true, it's him, he's the one who's singing the Moya, and he's all, all, all the vernacular, and he's all the Yeah. So, God has brought back what to my parents said. what they did. Sure. So, it sounds to me like your home was literally an everyday party. <laughs> it, your father but, being the chairman of the carnival committee, I mean. But in a good sense, it's like when my uh, uh, sisters and my brother went to high school, mm -hmm. my mother used to say, Instead of to you go out and to have party, bring your friends and have them here that we can see all of you. All right. So they will go to study there. Mm -hmm. They will go to celebrate there. Mm -hmm. My brothers were soccer players. Uh -huh. And then all the family go to the stadium to see them uh, playing and coming back with the whole oh. team of the neighborhood. That's it. And that was an Islam. And all of them became now teachers, uh -huh. engineers. It's uh -huh. like, your condition sure. doesn't determine sure. who you will be. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's very true. Tell me a little bit about your music career. It started as a child. Yes. Now, tell me a little bit about that, because I found it very interesting. Many people, you know, especially I would say this in an African setup, nowadays there's a little bit of change towards how people approach uh, things like talent on their children, but before, not many people are very keen about talent, especially when kids are very young. And to me, you sounded like you could listen to music, you know, you could read music through your ears. But when I see the kind of society we have today, uh, like when I was growing up, we were learning music in school, but then there reached a time 
when the, the education system was changed and the arts, especially in the primary school, was completely removed. Music was removed, art, uh, art and craft was removed, and things like home science was removed, things uh, that gave people that artistic touch to life. In your childhood, how was your encounter, what was your encounter with art, and particularly music? You may find that maybe my family and the activities of a sport and music we were doing, uh, that can be a kind of challenge. And it, yes, in a way it was, mm -hmm. because I don't blame the parents uh, here because it's happened the same there. Mm -hmm. Many times people have take art to filter or to, um, how can I say, to rest or to rely their own problems mm -hmm. or to explode what they are probably carrying in Express outside. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, what I invite the youth is to show our parents that the story can be different. In that way, we will change now the history. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they, have, they have a reason. The parents have a reason. So in South America, mm -hmm. when they are studying art, they rise up their hair and they tint it with white. So, uh, my, fa <laughs> my, my family, we were musicians, but we were not allowed to do that. To but do they that still, thing. to tell that, that I was going to take art as a career, mm -hmm. You cannot do that because they will tell no. Yeah, you should. need to be a doctor or an engineer. Yeah, but it's a real challenge. Yes, yeah. art make a people mm -hmm. grow from their innermost. It activate mm -hmm. some things in the brain of the children mm -hmm. and make the things easier. Then make them to think in a wider Wide way. Yeah. As a child, you told me you are part. You are part of this ensemble. I would like to hear a little bit about how you got to join this ensemble and. When did you continue with it to the end, or did you leave it at some point? Yeah, I leave it at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I engage in the school of law. Mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> because if I was going to tell that I was going to study music, I, I was not. And I was going then to abroad as well. It's okay. From this side, I want to be uh, an, a lawyer or an uh, expertise in international law. Mm -hmm. or, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me try in the main university of my country. I was selected. And then I was the only one of the eight who went out to the capital. That is eight hours far mm -hmm. from the countryside, from the village where I was born. Mm -hmm. And there I became a lawyer. But then, because I knew myself, if I start to do music, I will not continue studying because it will trap me. I know it. Mm -hmm. So I leave it to do it in the last year. Oh, right. uh -huh. And in that year, I won three festivals. Mm -hmm. And I received a national award coming from the presidency mm -hmm. Uh, in uh, artistic and cultural expression oh, right. in a national level. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it was meant to be there. I can see that the one I am living in Kenya is my second rise up moment in music. All right. Because after that, I leave it again, mm -hmm. and then I dedicated to be a lawyer and to work. All right. That's it. But I can see from the academic point of view, mm -hmm. that was. Mm -hmm. But it's unavoidable. This mm -hmm. is for you, African, to say that I will not do music. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. You grow up mm -hmm. with the rhythm in your body. Sure. It's like you don't really suffer to dance. Yeah, yeah. And this is we must clarify here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you go to any parts of the world I don't want to mention, yes. people engage in classes mm -hmm. just to do some steps. You don't engage in any class. Sure. <laughs> it comes naturally. <laughs> it comes naturally. So we are art by ourselves, and we cannot separate ourselves of our essence. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, uh, right now, You've lived in Kenya how long? Uh, six years, seven years. Six, seven yeah. years you've lived in Kenya. Yeah. Now, as you live in Kenya and you interact with people, yeah. what would you say about the nurturing of young talent, especially in Kenya? What you've seen for yourself in terms of nurturing of young talent, specifically, let me say, in the arts and more to be more precise, in music? Okay, in music, what I, what I would like to tell is like, you have the talent there, mm -hmm. uh, and there are many opportunities uh, to go with it, but what must be maybe spread more is the center that you have here where you can study and to explore more. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, for example, they are there, but they are not known by the people. Sometimes when you, go, you have universities here that are number one, mm -hmm. I say, you have a very famous actress, mm -hmm. uh, Lupita Nyong'o, mm -hmm. that's a <laughs> beautiful, I mean, <laughs> sure, sure. and talented, uh -huh. and she started here. Oh, she's from my neighborhood. Her father was my MP wow, for wow, like wow. 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Just bragging, I mean. That's amazing, <laughs> but it, that, it, 
she is an example because she, I was in Alian Frances and yes. I was told that she was doing some things there. Yes, she was it's part like, of, yeah. I told you in another your program, opportunity only find those ones who are prepared All right. and then we must make join uh, efforts to make the youth know the center that they already had. Right. You have groups here. Uh, it's not that I want to do advert, mm -hmm. but there is a group here called Heart, Heart Strings. Yeah, Heart Strings. That they are all going always to Alian Frances yes, with yes. a really big crowd sure. of number of people. Sure. And uh, so the opportunities are there, mm -hmm. but we have to look for them, maybe to uh, spread more the information to the youth of this center. Right. You have universities. Kenyatta University, they study art. Kenyatta University, they have a big school of art. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, for, and it's not that, uh, how can I say, the demand maybe is not that much high, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe we can uh, join effort with some organizations just mm -hmm. to address some of the sponsors, mm -hmm. sponsorships that they give mm -hmm. to support them when they want to mm -hmm. give the, mm -hmm. do these uh, steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, there's something that I found, personally my observation, that I found uh, common with uh, uh, how we handle art in Kenya. Uh, I don't know if it's Africa, but specifically I'm speaking about Kenya. Uh, we don't, we found, we find artists or singers who are good in singing, they sing very well, they're very popular and they do music, but they cannot read musical notes because to them singing is natural. Do you think this is one of the things that also can be a hindrance in terms of making better musicians? There is a, there is an ad advantage and disadvantage there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have been going to festivals here, and I was going with one of my, okay, it's from, a, from another continent, uh, pianist that I have. Yes. But I have another pianist that is from here. And is this true? Sometimes uh, he cannot uh, maybe memorize the things mm -hmm. because uh, I'm reading music is, but if me, I get lost, he will Good never type. get lost in the song. Mm -hmm. That is the difference when you are too much academic right. and when you are doing it from the heart from and the it's heart. part of you. Mm -hmm. And since it is part of you, hi, for you will cost only minutes to rehearse or to hit before mm -hmm. to go to the stage and everything will come sure, right. Sure. When you see other people just mm -hmm. training, training, mm -hmm. training. So the thing is we shouldn't get it for granted that we are talented. Yes. I got your point. Yes. It's like we must cultivate it. All right. Yeah, so the two things so must come together. the academic part also needs to be brought in if there's... Yeah, because as, as well, it's like, for example, you have a talent mm -hmm. and you are m better than many people in another continent. Yes. But maybe in another continent, they are looking for the title. Yeah. That's just, they just right. overcome that thing, uh -huh. being the title. Uh -huh. That will give you an advantage. All right. That when the everybody, mm -hmm. you must be relying on it, get lost mm -hmm. in the uh, scripture, you will be still good playing because you are playing from heart. From it's part heart. of you. Uh -huh. yeah. The reason I asked that is uh, you mentioned something about your childhood, mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, when you're young and you're playing and then the, the, the conductor makes everything to stop and then listens to you, removes the notes, but then you're still playing and stuff like that. And he right away he's like, I knew it. <laughs> it is in you. Yeah. Uh, that's something that we see a lot in Africa and uh, hence why I needed to bring it up. But also, uh, right now in Kenya, you are doing music. What yeah. kind of music are you doing? Gospel vernacular. Gospel vernacular. Yeah. Strictly gospel vernacular. Okay, I have a triple album and a vernacular album. Right. The triple album called, is called Light, mm -hmm. where everything there is, every track is in French, Spanish, and English. All right. And the other is Golden Kenya, mm -hmm. which is vernacular gospel. All right. Uh, how many languages? How many vernaculars? Luo, Kikuyu, uh -huh. um, uh, Kalenjin. Uh -huh. uh, the next one coming is uh, Luya. Okay. And they are so on. All right. Now, I want us to talk about that, but that will be after this break. Viewer, if you are just joining us, you're watching The People Show, and today we have a very special guest with us, Iguasu. That's how he pronounces his own name. Iguasu is here with us today and is sharing with us his story. And I believe if you have comments, suggestions, or opinion, you need to share that with us. 21144 is the number, 21144. You can also drop us an email if you have any inquiries, questions that you'd like to ask us on info at gbskenya.com. We take a short break. When we come back, we want to talk to him more. And also, I believe just as you there at home, I also would like to hear him sing for us one vernacular song. But we do that right after the break. 
Papá y mamá, no cao bueno, te roca yoga, neo cachango, neo cachango, neo cachango, ya le neo cachango, taya. You are watching the people's show in GBS. Don't miss it. Welcome back, viewer. You are watching the people's show here on GBS TV, where we bring you viewing beyond the limit. Our guest today on People show is Iguasu, and as I promised, and as also I express my own, <laughs> I, I don't want to call it desire, but my own interest is that I would like Iguasu to sing us one song first before we say anything, <laughs> and I will be very biased. <laughs> you know what I want you to sing for us, Iguasu. Great. Yes. So that's your camera. Just give us a short track, and then we go straight into it. Ni guara no no aguengo di la moni guara no no ni guara no no aguengo di la moni guara no no ni guara no no papá ni guara no no ni guara no no papá ni guara no no ni guara no no jale ni guara no no taya ni guara no no jale ni guara no no taya ni guara no no ni guara no no that's Iguasu. <laughs> Welcome back again to the show. Do you know the meaning of the song? Y literally, <laughs> no, but in general sense, in I general know sense, I is yeah, he saved me for free. He saved me for free. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, Lua songs. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Now, Iguasu, before right before the break, you were telling me about you know, the albums that you've done, one with the mixture of Spanish, English, and French, and then you have the Kenya Gold that has yeah. Kenyan vernacular. Yeah. What drove you to focus on vernacular languages of Kenya? The thing is, this is a nation of believer, and uh, I think there was God has a reason for everything. For a reason, he brought me here. Mm -hmm. I, ho I didn't know I was coming here. And then my mother was happy that I was coming here, and she was coming to live here with me. Um, uh, I had an accident here, and I ho I, I'm a runner of long distance, All right. for uh, 42 kilometers. Mm -hmm. But when I was training to one of the marathon, Lewa, I was knocked from behind. And uh, the doctors say that I was going to spend four years in bed rest, mm -hmm. two years in a wheelchair, and two years more using crutches, like eight crutches, years. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't want to tell me uh, because it's so, so he will break. But the fact is, like, to make it short, I walk in less than four months. Mm -hmm. And it was with a brother of mine, a bast as well, yes. who was telling me, uh, I told him, what do you think if I try? But I was like this, I couldn't move mm -hmm. in the bed. You had a spinal injury? Yeah, it was a fracture of the pelvic. Oh. In fact, the pelvic is the it's center of the yeah. Yeah. Oh. Then I said, OK. I will not tell anybody, just he closed the door, try, and I start to pull the blanket. The story is that I sat down, he was shocked. Then he came in front of me, are you able to stand up? And then I was grabbing his mm -hmm. shirt and until I stand up. Mm -hmm. When I went to the doctor uh, to tell him that, he what said, doctor, happened? wait, wait a minute, they open the chair. Okay, go ahead, stand up. When I stand up, the doctor jumped back, he said, son, this is impossible, you couldn't be walking. This sure. is, I have neither read it, Neither I have studied. Mm -hmm. He said, but you couldn't for no more reason be working. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, after the, this, I did my first album mm -hmm. with only one son, song that I dedicated to God. Yet I already was singing the other yes. by imitation, yeah. singing the people mm -hmm. and repeating what they were telling me. Mm -hmm. Is this son who opened the doors of all the churches here in Kenya and give me more parents here and more mother here yeah. all over? The more. <laughs> Emoyo and Iwana. No, no, but it's a, it's a Spanish song, mm -hmm. a Spanish French song uh, called Dio Go Dios in the three languages. All right. And then somebody told me, what do you, why don't you try to do a vernacular album? Because we see you always, I mean, why you don't define, don't you define yourself as a gospel artist? All right. Don't you see what God is doing with you? It's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do an attempt and I did Emoyo and Iwana. No, no. Mm -hmm. And this was when everything this else was happened. Hit and That's everybody was, was hit. knowing, I mean, you went viral on social media, you know, this, <laughs> you know, white guy who's singing Kikuyu and Lu. Uh, personally, for the first time when I saw, I think it was among a group of, you know, there were, I think it was a school function or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then you came out and you're singing and I was <laughs> so excited. Besides that, you know, 
you told me earlier that you also practice, you still practice law or you're just a trained, you're, 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 you're a lawyer by profession? I'm a lawyer by profession in this moment, no. Uh, I just trying to finish my master, which I was doing here as well, in right. international law as well. All right. uh, I keep reading, but I am more involved in more this moment in preaching and, uh, and in singing, mm. yes. I have found that, I have told in other programs, there is something that God wants, and I am yet to discover what it is, because it's not a random God. All right. I, I remember that I arrived to Hot 96, and this, for me, is one of the points that, when I think and think of, the, of it about it, it's like, it was my first vernacular album. Mm -hmm. I arrived to Hot 96. Mm -hmm. My presenters were, uh, were uh, DJ uh, MC Black Skills. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him, yeah, yeah. and DJ Covenant. Yes. At the end of the program, mm -hmm. singing both songs, I sang first the one that, that I did after the accident, yes. that was mixing uh -huh. all of those languages, uh -huh. French, Spanish, and English. Uh -huh. But then I end doing the other two. Both were excited and happy. And at the end of the program, mm -hmm. he told me, I said, this is awesome. I mean, I have received the blessing sure. in, uh, this is priceless. Sure. It's like, and for sure there is a God talking there. Mm -hmm. And then this is home. I this is what <laughs> moved you now to, yeah, to continue, to continue more music. and more. Yeah. Where exactly do you do your ministry? And as you're doing your ministry, what kind of people do you interact with? And what, what message do you give them? Okay. Uh, normally, I uh, started just in one church, but now I am all over. Mm -hmm. Then I was like a man, I, I was shaped like a preacher in another one. Then now I, I have found if I mention one, I don't mention the other. It's a big problem. God. <laughs> <laughs> but I am all over. Wherever you invite me to your church, I will go just right. to show to the people that we are only one. Sure. Yeah, there is no difference that sure. uh, separates us. Yes. One of the things that maybe I have forgotten, sorry because I have skipped, is like yes. maybe this matter that God has put me to go through with your language is first, mm -hmm. he has brought me to the link of my father itself. All oh, right. Himself, yeah. Africa, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Africa. And then the second one is like, let's put down the curtains that separate us because that the strength that unite us yes. is powerful, powerful, more powerful than And that is God. Wow, yeah. that's very interesting and very strong as well. Thank mm -hmm. you. The, sorry, the, what you asked me to tell to the people, mm -hmm. which are my target or which are my mm -hmm. followers, mm -hmm. as well is difficult to say. Because I uh, started preaching for people normally, but the children, uh, there is something, there is an effect there, yeah, I don't know. Children, yeah. They come over to me bah, and they <laughs> sing and they dance. This day I was uh, really, somebody shouted shout at me, uh, one MC. Because the children came over the stage just to, to, to take photos with oh. me. I said, but this is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And the effect <laughs> is coming with the children, but all, also with the elder. Yeah. I can tell you that I have two experiences. I have one experience in uh, Ruai. That's mm -hmm. a, a, that, yeah. Ruai. Uh, with the, I was singing a moyo there, mm -hmm. and the papas and the mama stand up to dance. And the other was, if you watch the video of Niwaranono mm -hmm. in Kisumu, mm -hmm. in the church where I was yes. uh, uh, ministering, mm -hmm. the mamas dancing. All, all mamas. So wow. <laughs> there is something there. There is a connection with it. Now the youth, if you see, I am doing a, every three months, I am going to a pro, a do a children's show called right. The Hour of Iguazu. Okay. If we are going to near on 30th of uh, this month, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't ask people to give us anything. Just all donations give to the director of the children's home. You, you should touch nothing. We are going just to give fun to the children. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to Western. There all is right. a in Luya Land Luya to do. Land. Yeah, that is the next one we are going to do. Right. Yeah, and uh, uh, yes, it's like I end up you know, uh, going for the children, special children as well, disabled children. Okay. Uh, because it's not that the special children, they don't have the capacity, no. You will find that they are more intelligent and smart than any other people. The sure. only that the mechanism yeah. to express what they think is it's what this block mm -hmm. does it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll agree with you because I've seen uh, autistic children yeah. do amazing things. You know, when you look at them, they are regarded as special, but when they do stuff, they do better stuff than what we'll call normal children. And maybe before we conclude, because, and I wonder how time is flying fast, maybe you can just share with us, in your stay, as you stay in Kenya, 
what are some of the cultural uh, uh, expressions or lessons that you've learned with the Kenyan society as you interact with them that you would say maybe people in Venezuela, for instance, can relate to? Okay, the matter uh, that uh, you know people and you don't fear them for to, to share the bread in the table, the Ugali. It's like the Ugali, you don't deny to anyone who, at the, at the time that you will go to eat, uh -huh. everyone who is around uh -huh. come to the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just how this is on. <laughs> that's it. When Ugali is placed on the table. Yeah, when Ugali is placed on the everyone. table, it's for everyone. I say, you, you cannot be seated down there and not invited sure. to come to the table mm -hmm. to eat with all of us. That's mm -hmm. But something that is beautiful is like it reached to a point of, uh, I can say, among you, that I really, is so sweet. Mm -hmm. You are drinking tea mm -hmm. and uh, somebody arrived and pass with a cup and it's finishing and you mm. have a lot and then you pour from yourself <laughs> cup to the other <laughs> one is so sweet i find it <laughs> find so it. sweet you've ne it doesn't you didn't see it out there no 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 out there no it's like the people when yeah. they are uh, using their cup is uh, yeah. each one with a cup but uh. the matter that you that even can share it is like that take it's like that's extra yes. warm. It's like this is, I am it's able warm. to share everything like, there is nothing that is only for myself mm -hmm. and at the end that is it if you read the Bible, many times mm. God uh, is telling, but the land belongs to me, mm. but the land belongs to me. Yeah. It is like you or your father, mm. he may have had many children, but your father, I don't know if he's alive or not. He passed in he passed. some years ago, yes. If your father know mm -hmm. that he left a piece of land and you are fighting over it, yeah. he will be depressed and sad. He will not be happy. I don't think God will be happy. Mm seen people uh, divided and fighting over things that I say, I would, uh, for sure, if it were me, I would have say, if I would have known that that would happen, I wouldn't have left anything sure. to them, yeah, because you never want to see them fighting. Mm -hmm. that's, just, that's the thing. And uh, that is what I find extra beautiful of you. Mm -hmm. There are many, some, many lessons here to be learned. It's like, if you are able to share what you are drinking, what drinking. if you're able to take what people is giving, mm -hmm. this is the big door called Agape for agape. something in the Bible that is mm -hmm. love. That in, in, in Greek is agape, is not a door, it's a gate, mm -hmm. which means love. It's not a door, it's not a simple door. It's, it's a, a gate. gate that can bring you many beautiful things. And this is a lesson I have learned from you. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Because our time is up, I would like to give you one straight minute to look into that camera and give us your your favorite Spanish song in one minute, and then just give us a parting shot. So I'm giving you two minutes to do all that. Go. Having in mind all make like Jesus who for love pacify from every mountain, a prayer for my country I want to raise. Pensando en todos los que amando por Jesús pacificaron al mundo, Por mi país, elevo una oración. People, there is no reason for us to be separated. All the things that make us to fight, those are tests that God is putting to us to see the capacity that we may have to join hands and to make this world a better place for the generation coming behind us because we will not be here forever. And the land and everything belongs to him. Thank you very much, viewer. You heard it yourself. That's Iguazu. His message is very simple. The things that we fight over as people, as a nation, or as a community, or as communities, they're not things that are worth fighting for. Those are things that are supposed to bring us together. Land, he mentioned specifically land. Land belongs to God. And God gave us land and put us in that land together powerful message coming from Iguazu and because of time we have to end it here <laughs> if you have any comments suggestions or opinion you can send that to our email address info at gbskenya.com you can also send us a short sms on 21144 21144 is the number I've been your host Timothy Omondi and once again I'd love to reiterate this Iguazu was our guest today until next time bye bye and God bless you you also thank you.
Thank you so Very much. Thank you very much for blessing this. <laughs> that pleasure is mine. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you.